HIV first enters the body through the bloodstream. The viral particle is surrounded by a membrane that's studded with viral proteins known as envelope proteins. In this cross-section, the conical-shaped capsid, shown in orange, houses the RNA genome, shown in blue. Accessory proteins are shown in purple. At about 100 nanometers in diameter, HIV is about 100 times smaller than its target cell, the T cell, shown here to scale. The virus first contacts T cells through interactions between the viral envelope proteins and membrane proteins on the T cell surface. Initial binding occurs through CD4 proteins, shown here in yellow. Binding of a second membrane protein, called a co-receptor, shown here in orange, triggers a dramatic change in shape of envelope protein. The first conformational change allows envelope protein to insert into the membrane of the T cell. Next, envelope protein folds back on itself, forcing the fusion of the T cell membrane with the viral membrane. This allows the viral capsid to enter the cell. Inside of the cell, the virus starts to move towards the nucleus, using microtubules as a sort of highway system. During this translocation, a viral enzyme known as reverse transcriptase, or RT, gets to work. RT has already been primed during its time in the capsid and starts to use cellular pools of DNA nucleotides to make a DNA copy of the RNA genome. As it goes, it degrades the single-stranded RNA. Multiple RTs work simultaneously to carry out this task, resulting in a complete double-stranded DNA copy of the viral genome. And meanwhile, the capsid shell begins to break apart. The viral genome has now reached the nucleus. A segment of the viral DNA, bound by the viral protein integrase, shown in yellow, starts to make its way across the nuclear pore. Inside the nucleus, integrase binds to cellular DNA, cuts it, and inserts the viral DNA. The viral DNA, or provirus, can become active immediately or remain dormant for days, weeks, or even years. After activation, the cell begins its transformation into a viral factory. In the first stage, the viral DNA is copied into RNA, a process known as transcription, that is carried out by RNA polymerase, shown in yellow. For many genes, including proviral genes, RNA polymerase pauses soon after it initiates transcription and requires additional signals from the cell in order to continue. HIV is able to bypass this pause through the recruitment of a protein complex called PTEV-B, shown in pink. As viral RNAs are produced, some are spliced, that is looped, cut, and glued back together, producing RNAs of different lengths. The viral RNA transcript contains a short sequence that binds to a protein called REV in pink that attracts cellular proteins that direct the RNA to exit the nucleus through the nuclear pore. Once outside the nucleus, different RNAs have different fates. Some are made into proteins using cellular machinery called ribosomes. Ribosomes read the RNA and produce viral proteins, in this case, the viral protein GAG shown in yellow and orange. Other viral RNAs are destined for packaging into new viruses. These RNAs attract GAG protein along their journey to the cell membrane. Along the way, two copies of viral RNA bind together, forming a stable, dimerized RNA structure. At the cell membrane, viral proteins, including envelope protein and thousands of copies of GAG protein, accumulate and capture the dimerized viral genome. Meanwhile, GAG forms a tightly packed lattice that forces the membrane to bulge out. As the viral bud grows, numerous additional proteins are recruited in stages.
Near the final stage, proteins known as escort 3s appear. These proteins, shown in teal, form polymers that act to pull together the membrane at the bud neck, eventually causing the membrane to undergo fission. Once released, the new virus rapidly undergoes a process known as maturation. Maturation is triggered by the dimerization and release of proteins known as protease, shown in pink, which act as molecular scissors, cutting the gag protein at specific sites to release shorter proteins, including nucleocapsid proteins that go on to bind and compact the viral RNA, and capsid proteins that form a conical shell around the RNA. The mature viruses are now able to begin a new round of infection with a new host cell, and the cycle begins again.